Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to another date with the uh, Lahore Literary Festival. Let me introduce uh, the two speakers. Uh, we are celebrating the publication of a new book by Zahid Hussain, No Win War, Paradox of U.S.-Pakistan Relations in Afghanistan's Shadow. Zahid is the, uh, has written for almost every American and British publication. He is a very well-known international journalist. He has a must-read column uh, in Dawn every week, and he's written numerous books on Pakistan, Afghanistan, and uh, geopolitics. I'm sure this book is also going to be extremely interesting. Uh, and with him, we have uh, uh, Kathy Gannon, who needs no introduction in Pakistan. She's the Associated Press Correspondent for Pakistan, Afghanistan. And she also earlier wrote a book called I for Infidel. Um, and uh, she is a, a, an authority. Uh, we spent a, a lot of time together uh, in Afghanistan, especially in the early days uh, of the Taliban. She has continued to pursue the Afghan conundrum uh, more than perhaps any other journalist in, uh, in, in, in memory. So I, I leave you here and I leave you in the safe hands of these two veteran correspondents. I'm going to, to start by, by saying what a tremendous book, Zahid. I mean, um, for someone like me who's been engaged in Afghanistan for over 30 years, um, the, um, the detail is struck me. Uh, so much information and, and, and minute detail of conversations and relationships that really changed history. And, uh, and I felt like after reading, I, I, I understood so much better. And I think for me, what your book does is uh, Pakistan has always been, or, or for the last 20 years anyway, the US has looked at Pakistan through the prism of Afghanistan. And I think what your book does is it uh, looks at the US and Afghanistan through the prism of Pakistan. And, and for me, that was just so tremendously interesting. And I'm just wondering, um, there, there's so much here, but what I wanted to ask you initially was, um, it's been 20 years. In those early days, you know, when, when Musharraf was being um, uh, asked to give up the Taliban, when, uh, and, and Musharraf made a lot of suggestions that may have changed the war um, in terms of uh, um, not wanting an unfriendly government in Kabul, um, being betrayed by that, suggesting to bring in moderate Taliban. Could you talk a little bit, Zahed, please, about just how many um, decisions and, and were made that really, had they listened perhaps more to Pakistan, the history would have been a little different. Well, thank you, Kathy. Uh, I learned a lot from you and from your writing and your coverage of Afghanistan. Uh, well, actually, uh, when we are talking about looking back uh, 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 of 9-11 events which have taken place uh, after 9-11, there are so many things that are happening. First, actually, the very, much, the very alliance of United States and Pakistan. It was not that was the convergence of interest so much, but uh, because of expediency, Pakistan came uh, uh, or become a, an ally of United States. So uh, the other thing is that from the very outset, this alliance um, has never had some kind of that kind of convergence that we have seen in 1980s relations between United States and Pakistan. Um, uh, the first thing, as you have mentioned, actually, what went wrong there? So there's a, uh, I wrote actually the original sin, and that's what uh, uh, explains what really happened um, uh, in Afghanistan over the last 10, uh, 20 years, and also what was happening in relations between Pakistan and United States at that point. As you pointed out, rightly pointed out, that, um, uh, that Pakistan had many times actually were uh, 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 asked the United States to include moderate Taliban in the negotiation in Bonn. And that was the turning point in that way. Yes, I think um, uh, uh, it is fact that uh, it could not have happened because some other reasons. 
Northern Alliance uh, uh, that has already taken over Kabul uh, with the support of, you know, of American forces. They were not uh, they were not ready to include any section of Taliban. The other thing is, Americans thought that Taliban um, were also uh, were part of Al Qaeda network, and they were just um, uh, and they have to be annihilated. One thing that um, uh, Dr. Brahimi, who was a special UN envoy and who was the main architect of Bonn Agreement, uh, he later on said that it was original sin, that um, uh, no section of uh, uh, Taliban, Taliban, there were various factions of Taliban, some of them were, were willing to accept the new reality and uh, would, like, uh, would have liked to become the part of the mainstream party. It did not happen. So when we are uh, going back to, uh, to whatever have happened, I think that explains a lot. Given that Pakistan has only been seen through the prism of Afghanistan, how has that distorted the relationship? And Pakistan is always seen as sort of an um, untrustworthy partner and, and you know, a, a double, a, a sort of always a double face. And and yet, and as I read your book and I was looking at, you know, um, the Bush's secret memo and, you know, not to, about uh, drones and not uh, telling Pakistan, it seems that both have, have had this sort of, uh, uh, distrust and, and, and distrustful relationship. And I guess, it, could you speak a little bit about this relationship and how, um, because you had such inside conversations I had with people that, that um, looking at where the relationship has been and where does it go? Because this is really quite significant now. Well, I think, I think it was a very strange relationship. And that's why actually it was uh, called Fairy Me, that uh, it was both, uh, friends and enemy at the same time. And I think probably we, have, we, have, we haven't seen anywhere this kind of relationship. When 9-11 uh, happened, um, Pakistan was needed by United States because uh, uh, to remove Al-Qaeda and remove Al uh, Taliban, our United States, um, uh, Pakistan was very critical to that. But um, uh, it was a kind of uh, shotgun marriage, I would say, unlike 1980s, when the United States and Pakistan got together, there was some convergence of interest at that point. But here, actually, it was, uh, there's no strategic convergence between the two countries when 9-11 uh, happened. Uh, Pakistan was uh, supporting Taliban, and while the United States was against it, and uh, somehow CIA had already established relationship with Northern Lions, which was fighting against the Taliban. So in a way, they were standing on, on the other, uh, uh, against each other somehow. So 9-11 brought them into a relationship, which um, uh, from the outset was based on huge wall of distrust. There was hardly any uh, uh, trust left because of what happened in 1990. When after uh, but uh, uh, after the withdrawal of Soviet forces from Afghanistan, uh, in, uh, Pakistan was left all alone, and there was a sense of betrayal in Pakistan. And 1990s was the pre period where the, uh, there was complete uh, estrangement. Pakistan was the most sanctioned countries um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, by the United States, and 9/11 changed the whole thing. But uh, um, uh, yes, actually, it, uh, it was uh, some kind of compulsion for Pakistan, Pakistani military particularly, because General Musharraf was at the, at the helm at that point. He took a decision, knowing it very well, that if he had not gone with the United States, uh, that would have created a very difficult situation for Pakistan. So that's how this relationship came up. And throughout that period, we have seen there was some convergence of interest, definitely, there were cooperation on certain things, but there were also actually huge uh, reservation on others, other factors. Like, for example, uh, there was um, uh, uh, quite a good co cooperation between the two countries when Al Qaeda, uh, when, it, uh, when it came to uh, taking action against Al Qaeda. Uh, most of the high profile uh, Al Qaeda leaders were, uh, were uh, captured uh, by in Pakistan. Uh, with, uh, with the ISI cooperating with CIA. But uh, when it comes to a, to a Taliban, they were completely actually a different situation. Pakistan, most of the Taliban leader came to Pakistan after uh, invasion of Afghanistan by the United States. They stayed here. And uh, so they and organized themselves from Pakistan. 
and uh, certainly Pakistan uh, they looked on the other side, or in some cases, they also cooperated with Taliban. So this kind of strain, that um, uh, uh, that kind of strange relationship, while uh, while United States was fighting against the Taliban, in fact, Pakistan, to some extent, was protecting the Taliban. Look, you know, I mean, because certainly it's a very key relationship uh, today. Um, uh, Afghanistan doesn't trust Pakistan. United States doesn't trust Pakistan. Um, I guess from Pakistan's point of view, what is it about the Afghanistan they don't trust or, or America that they don't trust? And how do you, it's like it keeps going over and over year after year after decades, you know, and, and how do you get beyond where there is a, a way to build that trust if you can? But, but first, um, what is it, you know, we all know why Afghanistan doesn't trust Pakistan. We all know why America doesn't. Why, why, why does Pakistan not trust them? Well, actually, two things. Number one, actually, uh, the, the government which came into power, or which was stolen power in, the, in Afghanistan after 9-11, um, after uh, was largely dominated by Northern allies. And uh, you know the history much more than anybody else at Afghanistan. Uh, it was actually um, a, a kind of uh, uh, civil war when, uh, in the last 40 years, Pakistan had been supported of particular groups, uh, like for example, during um, uh, anti-Soviet jihad, they supported Bilbadin Hikmatia because this being Pashtuns and others. Uh, uh, and then they, they, from 90s, they supported the Taliban. And on the other hand, Northern Alliance was fighting against the Taliban. So that kind of polarization existed. Uh, Pakistan, uh, pa Taliban were backed by, pa uh, by Pakistan. And on the other side, Northern uh, Alliance were, uh, were, back, uh, were backed by Iran and India. And that is the problem, that when Northern Alliance came, into, uh, came to power, so Pakistan thought actually uh, that, that was understanding that uh, it is anti-Pakistan, and uh, and exactly same uh, same sentiments were in the Northern Alliance government. They considered Pakistan as main enemy. So throughout that 1990s, they were fighting against the Taliban, which was backed by 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 um, by Pakistan. So that actually uh, uh, you know uh, estrangement, or you can say actually this uh, kind of. Uh, uh, divergence or enmity existed. So when when Northern Alliance came to power, obviously uh, they, uh, it was uh, the, from the very outset the relationship was not going to be good. What is Pakistan's position? You know, if you could, uh, um, we know where the the Afghanistan stands and what they think. Um, what what is Pakistan's sort of? How how do you how how does Afghanistan and the U.S. Um, how should they be looking at what is Pakistan's security concerns and how should they be responding to them? Well, I think uh, when um, America went into Afghanistan, they have, uh, hardly have any understanding of that country. They did not understand the dynamic. They did not understand the politics fully. Um, uh, and they had just walked out from the region after uh, withdrawal of Soviet forces in 1989. And so basically they were quite, and completely uh, relied on Pakistan. So uh, I think uh, uh, the major problem, the United States, the thing is that, um, uh, uh, that uh, um, the war in Afghanistan went wrong from the very outset because after two years, Americans thought that the uh, Taliban were history. Uh, the war has been won in Afghanistan. They diverted their attention to Iraq. And that's where actually uh, uh, the whole situation, you know, by 2005, the second phase of Afghan war started. And uh, at one point, when uh, President Obama uh, came to power in 2009, uh, 2009, years January, Afghanistan was already seems to have been lost. So the whole, if you see actually the whole American strategy, uh, first it was uh, for the surgeon troops, Am I, uh, there are about 170,000 U.S. troops were there in Afghanistan, but they did not have any exit plan. If you could see, actually, that um, uh, that Obama gave a deadline of 18 months, and that was the most foolish thing to do because at, at that point, um, the Taliban thought actually uh, that uh, Americans may have um, uh, watched 
but they had the tribes. And that is how the whole thing is. So Pakistan has come to, uh, to Pakistan. Well, actually, there was Pakistan security concerns, strong security concern. And uh, that Americans did not understand it. Some of the security concerns may have been exaggerated, but there was some genuine concern. Like, for example, whatever happens in Afghanistan had always have a direct bearing on, on Pakistan. So Pakistan could not have completely um, uh, distanced itself from what is happening in Afghanistan. So the first concern, Pakistan security concern, was that Northern Alliance was too close to India. And that is a fear. I mean, I'm not saying that the, all, the fear was all, um, uh, uh, or, or means, uh, uh, have some basis. But yes, certain things are, have. There was fear that um, uh, Indian influence in Afghanistan uh, has created a security problem for Pakistan on its western border. So that old fear of being surrounded from east, uh, from eastern and western side uh, actually uh, haunted Pakistan. And that's one of the reasons, Kathy, that uh, Pakistan kept supporting factions of Taliban. Do you think that the Pakistan's concerns are legitimate, first off? And um, everything you said, I'm, I'm still not clear. Do you think that the United States better understands, I mean, you know, better under, genuinely understands what Pakistan's concerns are, or is it still um, trying to drag them in a direction that they want regardless? Or do you think that, that there is a better understanding or they're really still miles apart? I think they're still miles apart. They're not actually, and there's a very, you know, a narrow interest which binds them. I mean, ironically, it has been. It was Afghanistan which had been the main cause of tension between United States and Pakistan over the 20 years. But it has also been a cause uh, for them to stay together. That's a very strange phenomenon. Like, uh, why could you mm -hmm. question, despite all those, uh, uh, you know, friction, uh, quarrelling, uh, 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 tension, the two countries uh, stayed together to, in some kind of relationship. Why? It is because it's all about Afghanistan. So I think that that is still dictates the relationship. But um, the, yeah, the, yeah, you are absolutely right. There's uh, there's no it's, it's still no uh, uh, no understanding the United States. What are Pakistan's concern? They see Pakistan's relationship only through Afghan prison. Can, can I ask? On, on, not on Afghanistan or Pakistan, but you know, after researching and, and you know this subject inside and out, were there any surprises? I mean, you talked to so many people, you had such interesting conversations and, and, um, and, and met with people that others have just heard their names, whether it's in the Pakistani security apparatus, the American. Were there any surprises I had, you know, after, after in your research where you thought, oh man, I had no idea. Well, there's a lot of uh, you know, surprise because when you see the situation on I mean, on the surface, and when you uh, you talk to the players, to the actors, then you uh, you come to the real story. What uh, what happens uh, on the uh, 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 on the uh, in the open is much more happening uh, in the background. So I, I'll get you one example that even the you know the toughest time in U.S. Pakistan relations, uh, particularly 2011. You know, some kind of contact behind the behind the scene or back channel diplomacy worked actually. So it was actually for me it was most interesting part how they were actually the sharpest statement coming out from the from Washington and Islamabad the military. Uh, 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 I mean, like some statement for the military actually about uh, about the you know situation in Afghanistan. But behind the scene, they were continuing. Uh, they continue to talk, and that's how the relationship survived. So that was quite interesting. And something like, uh, you know, the discussion which went on in the behind, you know, which was never been reported uh, in, the, in the media. So that was, I think, probably quite uh, exciting for me. And I'm, I'm not sure whether we used to have, it's been, it's been 30 minutes. I'm not sure if we still have more time or... Um. But um, one thing I want, one thing I wanted to ask you, Zahid, was uh, um, one of the things during Obama um, was, uh, and this is in the Pakistan-U.S. relations, 
is that uh, he's they seven billion or something toward propping up democracy in Pakistan. Um, is there something disingenuous about that whole propping up democracy in Pakistan when the U.S. really in in most of its its um, relationships is mostly about um, dealing with um, uh, um, military dictators, whether it's Zia, whether it was Musharraf, Musharraf they were very close with. So how has that um, maybe retarded the relationship or retarded the growth and made Pakistan maybe a little bit suspicious of U.S. Uh, democratic ideals? Well, I think, uh, yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, uh, traditionally, in, uh, Pakistani-U.S. relationship has always been uh, some kind of military to military relationship. There was always, um, you know, that's how, why actually we see and the relationship um, was uh, had uh, had been good uh, 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 with military dictators in, at the helms. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so I think probably the, uh, that is when civilian government came to power, the, they tried to change the time. But you know, actually, how Pakistan, the the balance of power, where li where does it lie? It lies in Pindi. And I think probably if you see the Americans, uh, despite the fact that they supported the, uh, uh, the civilian government, they always look toward the military. And the real, as they said, actually, they, you know, whenever the American dignitaries uh, officials came to Pakistan, they would meet the civilian leader for half an hour mm -hmm. and three to four hours they would spend in Pindi. So that's where, that's why actually they, that's very clear. They realized that despite even the transition of power from military government to civilian government, the real power always lies with Pindi or the world or military establishment. But it continues today, Sahid. You know, this still, you know, is 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 happening vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan when they when they come to um, Islamabad to discuss even post uh, um, uh, uh, Doha agreement. So, how much is that undermining uh, democratic development in Pakistan, or is it even undermining democratic development? Well, actually, this is the you know uh, sad situation, uh, like um, uh, uh, the military, despite the fact that now we have some kind of civilian um, set up in the country. But uh, uh, this uh, uh, the military has always been the detriment uh, uh, of, of Pakistan's foreign and security policy. And in fact, actually, even the civilian government left it to the, uh, to the military or they did not have any choice. Uh, to decide about their an uh, Afghanistan policy, even American policy uh, towards America, and then obviously national security, they all you know uh, uh, the relationship uh, with Afghanistan and the United States, States has always been considered as a part of national security for uh, Afghanistan. So in a way, actually, uh, well, uh, uh, we still see the who runs the policy in Pakistan. It's a military which uh, decides about what should be done in Afghanistan. And that, you know, even the Americans realize that, and they basically talk to military rather than to civilian government on, on the issues, when it comes to the issue uh, uh, in Afghanistan and others. If, if, and this is the last, because I know we're running out of time, if, if the U.S. was going to start to look at Pakistan through the prism of Pakistan, not through the prism of Afghanistan, what would you say they should be doing or how should they be uh, approaching Pakistan and would it really change how they um, operate in this region? I think we also have to see actually the, the, the change in the uh, uh, regional geopolitics. I mean, that is also now uh, uh, determine U.S. policy towards Pakistan. Uh, um, uh, we have seen actually like um, uh, India, uh, uh, Pakistan, uh, America would, uh, have long actually uh, dehyphenated relationship, uh, its relationship with India and Pakistan. This, you see, it is two different uh, spectrum from the two different spectrum. So it will, uh, uh, well, actually, the, the, uh, Afghanistan remains uh, the major interest in the region. But there is also, for the United States, Pakistan importance will continue to, uh, they continue to have some kind of importance uh, relationship with Pakistan. But uh, uh, I think for Pakistan, it's very important. 
relationship. Of course, they have to have good relationship with the United States. Every country needs to do that. But they should actually stop uh, seeing themselves, uh, uh, everything from the from in, in a relationship, uh, U.S. relationship with India. They, I think probably we should uh, see it uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, our, in our own interest rather than actually uh, see that what uh, because. Uh, for for United States, India remains a strategic ally now, and mm -hmm. the main emphasis of the Biden administration is obviously seems very clearly seen Indo-Pacific. Um, China is uh, is already been declared the main comp uh, competitor for the United States, and uh, so uh, for India will remain very important for for United States for reason. Uh, and in the meanwhile, Pakistan's relationship with China has has uh, strengthened. Mm -hmm. There has been a strategic relationship for uh, for the last four or five decades, but it has taken um, a much deeper dimension. It has taken a uh, you know it's no it's not just about the military or the defense cooperation. It's also about the economy and trade. So in a way, actually, in the changing geopolitics, Pakistan will have to balance uh, balance the relationship between China and its relationship with China and 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 United States. For United States, I think Pakistan will remain important, but um, for different reasons, uh, for Afghanistan and also for counterterrorism cooperation, it will actually. Uh, so, but there's also, I mean, a lot of scope for. Uh, uh, for economic cooperation, Pakistan would like actually to have access to um, American market. So uh, mm -hmm. that is very important. Pakistan, uh, America remains. We always see a Pakistan-U.S. relationship from only only security dimension. It has to move from that, from there, and to have major other focus too. <coughs> Sorry. Pakistan. United States remains the major main trading partner of Pakistan still. So there are some other aspects to the relationship also. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was doing, I was I was coughing too. Um, thank you so much, Zahid. Really, it's it's been for me, um, and I'm I've been you know following Afghanistan for way too long. Uh, but uh, um and uh, um so much I learned from your book. And I, I think your book is very important right now because I think it's important to understand the history, to understand the mistakes that were made and uh, to try to look at each participant as individuals and try to understand each participant, whether it's Afghanistan, Pakistan, United States, and then see how they work as a whole. So um, I, I, I really, I hope your book is, is a bestseller. So congratulations on writing it, Zahid. Very, 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 very